set down the resumption of the debate as an order of the day for a later hour. I call the member for Ballina to move her motion. Thank you, Madam Speaker. And I uh, rise to introduce on behalf of the Greens our public interest debate today and our motion, which I will read now, that we call on this House that this House, one, acknowledges that there is a housing emergency in regional New South Wales, two, notes that rising house prices in New South Wales have locked out most low to middle income earners, three, recognises that extreme rental stress and housing insecurity affects many people in communities right across New South Wales. Four, recognises the need for increased statewide investment in public and social housing. And five, commits to ensuring secure and affordable housing for people in regional and rural New South Wales. Madam Speaker, I know that my colleagues will talk about the whole state because, let's face it, um, the low to medium income earners across New South Wales are unable and it is prohibitive for them to purchase a home in 21st century New South Wales life. Um, and that is something that is in stark difference to other democratic countries where, social, where housing is a social asset, where housing is a human right, and where housing first is, is a core principle of those countries. But what we see in our state is a fiscal lens entirely when it comes to housing. And no doubt the government today will talk about their record uh, of investment in social and public housing. But we know from the recent task force uh, initiated by them that that is simply not the case. Um, there, as we say, housing is uh, safe and secure housing is a human right and it should be in this state. And Madam Speaker, we've seen astonishing growth in house, house prices in Sydney over the last two decades. Um, and we know that there's public and social housing backlog um, right across the state. And rental insecurity, and I see the member for Lismore is here and I will talk more about our, uh, the Northern Rivers, but rental insecurity for 40% of people in this state who rent every single year and every single time their lease comes up, they face um, unfair evictions and they face rent increases um, habitually that are not correlated to Incomes, they're not correlated to anything other than uh, the corporate dollar, sorry, making money through the banks um, and profiting off that. Uh, we know homelessness across the state in, and all of the shades of, that, of, of homelessness, that spectrum, um, is, is increasing um, and that the reality of anyone trying to live and pay rent or indeed survive on any kind of um, benefit in this state um, is near impossible. But in regional New South Wales, Madam Speaker, we have further um, sensibilities, which is what m leads me today to say that this is a housing crisis, that it's a housing emergency. It's not business as usual. In New South Wales, what has been exacerbated, uh, sorry, in regional New South Wales in the last two years, exacerbated by COVID-19, has pushed us to the edge. But what is different and what is unique is the income disparity. Because as all regional MPs in this place know, that the average medium income for single income earners in regional New South Wales is about a third of most parts of Sydney and metropolitan areas. So that is a uniqueness that we share, and I know the member for Lismore shares, is that our people do not have these mega incomes. But what's happening to them, of course, is that their ability to rent, their ability to buy a home is so, so very far away. And there's also, Madam Speaker, no public transport. So add that to the heap. And the, what we've seen is a massive exodus. And I know that the member for Murray, this is experienced right across the state. But in the Ballina electorate in particular, we also have um, the plight and the blight of the over-proliferation of short-term holiday letting through online platforms. At the moment, there's about 5,000 whole homes in Byron Bay that um, are on those shared platforms. Now, we, 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 we're not saying that that in itself is, is wrong, but what we are saying is, hang on a second, 
What about our residents? What about our workers? It's become like the Truman Show. We're headed towards a virtual town that has no actual residents because nobody can afford to live there. And I'm not exaggerating when I say that, Madam Speaker, um, that the cost of living in Byron has gone, uh, has doubled in the last two years. Uh, rents in Ballina, for example, have gone up 30% in the last year. Um, we know that on Byron Bay's current median house price sits at $2.3 million, um, and last year it was $1.5 million. Now, that, that sounds great if you're a property investor, but if you are a local resident, families, community workers, you have nowhere to live. So, Madam Speaker, I look forward to today because to hearing the other speakers because basically what we need is this government to take it seriously. We need them to declare an emergency and we need them to put all of those good minds that are right across this chamber to solve this because there are so many democratic countries that have. And I had the, uh, the great fortune of visiting friends in Sweden two years ago. I mean, half of the Swedish population are renters and they have it for 99 years. Um, you go to Singapore and 80% of the population are in public and social housing that is for life. So, Democratic countries are showing us how you do this. And we also know from the Regional Housing Task Force that the recommendation was to increase the availability of affordable and diverse housing. That is the government's own regional task force. Increase the availability of affordable and diverse housing. So where? So, so I hope that we hear from the government speakers not about their record investment in the past, but because it's not enough, and record investment, if it's not enough, is not going to make any records in terms of giving people homes. Um, and we know that that insecurity and lack of a safe and secure home um, and that housing prices being so out of reach for low to middle income earners means that people are in perpetual stress, perpetual stress. And we deserve, our communities deserve more and uh, I encourage all speakers to support our motion today. The question is that the motion